Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead. We have a pretty powerful week ahead on our hands this week as we are already in eclipse season. And um, usually I would do, you know, uh, an eclipse video. I've done them in the past. And in fact, you can probably find on my channel if you search um, eclipse you'll find, you know, uh, videos where I've talked about the eclipse cycles before. But I'm really, as I've been noticing the power of this week, I have been focusing a lot on this energy of Mars and Cancer. And Mars is not <laughs> necessarily at home in Cancer. Although you might think of Mars and Cancer as like Michael Phelps trying to swim through the water quite quickly. Um, however, when it comes to our emotional body, which is what Cancer represents, the places where we're seeking security, safety, vulnerability, nourishment, connection, it's hard to rush, to really rush those things, right? Like just the, in the same way, you can't tell a baby in utero to hurry up, <laughs> you know, hurry up and make your way because it really doesn't work that way, right? There is a developmental process that's happening in the sign of cancer and the development it's of the moon, it's of our emotional body. So much of what I focus on on this channel is following the moon through her cycles and rhythms. Every 28 days, she moves through. And twice a year, or sometimes, you know, in pairs, sometimes in sets of three, the moon makes what um, aspects that are eclipses. And they're essentially like, a new moon or a full moon that happens near within 11 degrees of where the ecliptical is. So, and the points in space that we consider the North node and the South node, these are those marker points. They're constantly moving. They've been traveling in the sign of Aries and Libra for the last 12 months. And we're just about done with this cycle, right? We're at the end of the eclipse cycle. Um, when we have the eclipse on October 2nd, next month, and I'll talk about that in the month ahead. And also, um, you know, I'll also talk about it in um, the week ahead of that week in particular. Um you know, we will be settling into the time period where we're really closing down that Aries Libra eclipse cycle. And we're in a time period where we're beginning the Pisces Virgo eclipse cycles. Um, next year, starting in January, the nodes of the moon will move into the sign of um, Pisces and Virgo. And so, you know, we're this particular eclipse, which is happening on September 17th or 18th, depending on where you live, um, is in, in the sign, it's a full moon in the sign of Virgo and Pisces. However, it's happening while the nodes of the moon are in Aries and Libra. And I did talk a little bit about it at the, you know, um, month ahead transmission. I'm going to touch into it here, but the preparation for this eclipse more specifically and more importantly is this square of Mars to the nodal axis. It's going to perfect tomorrow. So Sunday, September 15th, we'll see the perfection of this square, but with Mars energy, I always notice that it um, reveals itself it almost amplifies beforehand. It's kind of like the acceleration of the engine happens before 
you crash into the wall. You were already having momentum. You were already going in a particular direction. That momentum started long before you actually had the incident or the crisis or the contact. And it, with Mars and Cancer, that crisis really, when we think about what the, a square to the nodes is, is it, it's a crisis of consciousness. Um, it's an emotional crisis. It's one in which we are reaching sort of a peak of our emotional capacity. Based on what? Based on our patterns that have been predicated for probably the last 18 years, if not longer, the last 36 years, based on patterns that have come through since childhood. But often it's when we exhaust those patterns by almost exhausting ourselves emotionally that things change, right? We can see in our own lives that it takes sometimes the catalyst of an emotional reaction in order for the clearing to happen, for healing to happen. Not that we'd want it that way. Most of us, you know, like Mars doesn't want to be in cancer. Most of us would want to be able to um, get our motivation, do our thing, you know, be um, expressing our emotions and feeling our feelings and doing our life feeling safe and secure but often we're not, and we're not for many different reasons, right? A big part of what I was thinking about this week was um, based on this message that I received, which I think kind of sums up a lot of the astrological energy. And the message was, beauty is in the eye of the beholder as perception is in the mind of the perceiver. And I've been thinking a lot about how when we experience conflict in our lives, it has nearly everything to do with our perception of what's happening, what's happening to us, what's happening in us, right? And many times unconscious factors are revealing that inner experience as an outer experience, right? Venus has to do with projection um, in a way, of course. And just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? We can see something and be like, oh man, that's so beautiful. And we can similarly see something and be so triggered by it, right? Because perception is in the mind of the perceiver. And as we are in this process, in this crisis of consciousness, as Mars is building into this square to the nodal axis, it's culminating an entire cycle of the last 18 months, the last, you know, especially the last 12 months. And that cycle has had so much to do with the opposition, the back and forth between our desire to be following our will, what we want to do, what we what we feel instinctively, impulsively, courageously, just moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. I'm here. I have a purpose. This is what I'm here to do. And on the flip side, this relational field, this relational dynamic that desires listening, connection, relationship, balance, harmony. You know, Jeffrey Wolf Green talks about the Libra Venus archetype, which I just taught um, in my Love Evolution class series. We started Love Evolution yesterday. It's an amazing group, amazing deep dive for us into the Venus archetype. And I'm giving so much bonus content in this class series, I'm really giving um, everyone the opportunity to go deeply into this because I, 
I think that the Venus Pluto series conjunction at the end of the year is one of the most important transits of the year. And so we're, and we're in this buildup to that right now. And Venus just crossed the South node. She squared Mars. She made, she's making her way in a new phase to the South node. So we, we know things are shaking up. We know dynamics within us and outside of us are changing. And yet the emotional body, just like a two or three year old still has the propensity to release itself whenever it deems necessary, right? In the same way, we can't necessarily control our emotions. Sometimes maybe we do learn how, you know, I set a goal for myself um, last year mm -hmm. to really develop my own capacity around emotional regulation. That became like one of the most important things that I felt I could focus on. Um you know, we can really work on that or we can be really good at suppressing our emotions. And so when they come up, we don't let them come out, but no less, they still come out somewhere. Like everything wants to find a way out and through us, especially when we're speaking about the soul and the human experience, right? The soul is really wants to know itself, wants to return to source. And it comes through that path by desire, bottom line, and our cooperation and resistance to the call of source, which is happening all the time. And then our desire, our will, our, you know, Mars is considered the lower octave of Pluto. Um, our will is coming out through our motivation, our desire to create, to procreate, you know, our, our desire to live, our desire to express, our desire to emote, all of these things, right? Very much I'm speaking about the Mars and Cancer aspect of this, but that desire is for our feelings to not only be safe, to be cared for, to be, to be nurtured, but to be expressed, right? And the polarity of this, you know, Mars and Cancer is Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. So we do have some level of emotional responsibility, where when we notice those triggers, when we notice things being pushed to the surface, you know, we have the choice. Do we be like a child? Or do we be like an adult? You know, a child will scream and cry through a temper tantrum, maybe not even completely aware of that, the thing that they're upset about. Sometimes they're clearly upset about the thing that's right in front of them that seems to be happening to them or happening that they're not happy with, right? You know, the I had my toddler in the toy store the other day and it's like not wanting to leave, of course, very upset, right? Um, that's a clear, it's like my, I'm not getting my thing. I'm not getting what I want and I'm upset and I'm going to cry, right? And this can happen to all of us, you know, so much of like um, my life has been really this process of learning prayer and trusting God, but also like having those moments where I just felt like, God, I'm not getting what I want. And I'm, I'm mad about it. And I'm sad about it. And I'm angry about it. And, you know, that little, that little child inside can come out and be really upset. And then the other side of that is the adult, which is like, emotionally responsible, you know, and I'm not speaking about it from a Capricorn suppression perspective, but more from a Saturn in Pisces perspective, that that emotional responsibility comes with compassion. Oh, I see that you really want this. I see that it's really hard to not be where you want to be. You know, I see that you feel really lonely. I feel, I see that you feel tired. Oh, I'm going to cry. 
I see that you're wanting something. You know, you have such a deep desire in your soul for something more than what's happening right now. I see that that's hard. But that, that adult that we all have has the capacity to say also, and it's not happening right now. And we can accept that that is what is. And it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean that you can't be happy. It doesn't mean that you can't be content. It doesn't mean that you can't be at peace. You know, we can have unresolved dynamics and relationships. We can have unanswered questions in our life. We can have things that we're praying for, that we're waiting for, healing that we're waiting for, blessings that we're waiting for, that for some reason, unexplainably, to our limited knowledge of our lives and our soul journey, are not here. And that can be sad, you know, that can be hard. But this part of ourselves that is present can say, and that's okay. And I can actually feel sad. And I can actually feel disappointed. Or I can actually feel afraid or lonely or overwhelmed. Whatever it is that you're feeling, right? Eclipses and eclipse seasons often heighten our emotional responsive. And they're in many ways, like portals that kind of open and close. And with full moons in particular, you know, things can be lost. Things can be taken out. Things can be, things can come to an end or things can culminate in such a way that we feel that crisis inside that is calling us to shed something, to shed. And I would say, With this Mars squaring the nodal axis, we're being called to shed actually a deep sense of separation. That deep sense of separation comes from reinforced experience of unsafety, vulnerability, you know, trauma in many ways for many of us from our childhood emotional suppression that we can no longer live in that way there has to be a different level of consciousness that meets that vulnerability that meets all that desire right all that emotional desire And actually gives nourishment to that. Um, I went earlier today for a massage. And um, it's been such a long time since I've had that kind of like nourishment and care. And she was saying to me like, oh, you just have you just have to receive mama, you you give so much. You just have to receive. And it was like, it brought tears to my eyes. Because it's so rare for someone to say that. To acknowledge, like, how hard it is to be a mother. How much we are expected to carry. How much we have to do alone. <laughs> and just the kindness and care and safety of someone like reflecting to me that and then giving me permission to just receive and I was like could have had it go on for hours and hours you know I was like only a a moment you know (laughs) compared to how backlogged the need is you know And for so many of us, I think that the emotional needs 
are so deeply backlogged, like years and years, you know, and most of us are in such a state of busyness that we can get away with not catching up with our emotional body, but it doesn't get away from us. Meaning it doesn't go away. Like there's a a trauma informed phrase that says the issues live in the tissues, right? It turns in to things. It comes out and expresses in other ways. It pervades into relationship patterns or choices, food choices, spending choices, intimacy choices, uh, relationship choices, life choices that ultimately are the the rising tides of the backlog of our own emotional reality of unresolved feelings from childhood, from the past, from hurts, from traumas, from, you know, distorted masculine uh, relationships and um, grief and sadness. And all of that, all of that just doesn't go away just because we're busy, just because we're overwhelmed, just because we have a lot to do, just because we're, you know, not thinking about it. It simply stays like a dam kind of building up pressure behind a wall. And then things can happen that crack, you know, put a crack in the wall or, you know, really force us to face I remember when I received a diagnosis of precancerous cells and I was told that they had, you know, really accelerated and it was shocking to me and I was young and I was not expecting that. Um, But it had me realize at that moment in my life how angry I was at my family, especially at my mother and my father you know, at my life, at my childhood. And that if and you know, like I was angry in my life. And I thought at that time I was angry at like the boss or the colleague. I was angry at the six situations, these external situations. And, you know, but it was really, you know, it was it was much deeper than that. Most of the time, you know, from a soul perspective, where we're dealing with situations in the present moment, they are recreations of patterns from the past that have been unresolved, right? And Jeffrey Wolf Green talks about what the souls are coming in, obviously, with these unresolved dynamics. And when a planet squares the nodes, especially when it's in the natal chart, um, it is indicative of this desire to what they call it's the skip step to resolve the skip step and the resolution for that skip step goes back to the node that the planet squaring last conjoined with so if we go back with mars we take our we draw mars back to the last place that it was it made a conjunction to the north node um Let's see. It would have been a couple months ago. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but let's see. Let's see if we can get there. Yeah, there we go. In May. Okay. Um. So, you know, it made its conjunction to the North Node. And now it's moved all the way into the first quarter square position. And it's creating this skip step effect just before our eclipse, which to me is so indicative that we are both ready to resolve. But, uh, you know, I've heard Deva Green, Jeffrey Wolf Green's daughter also say this, that, you know, the souls will flip-flop back and forth between the nodes, right? Um, Between Aries, Libra, We're flip-flopping back and forth between those dynamics of separation and connection, 
separation and connection, you know? And of course, Venus is resolving to the South Node. So she's really emphasizing this new phase of moving towards connection, harmony, balance, right? She's moving towards a square to Pluto, which will happen at the end of the week, which will be her last and final square to Pluto in Capricorn in 248 years. We won't ever see this happen again in our lifetime. This is why, for me, it felt so important to do love evolution at this time. Because there isn't any other time like this in this year where we're just having so much culminating on a collective level, on an individual level. Mars and Venus are personal planets. These are personal relationship dynamics. These are personal emotional currents these are feelings that we are carrying within us and again like the message that i received you know perception is in the mind of the perceiver right the emotion is in the body of the feeler and that emotion is gonna need to find its way out Right. If we have cancer, I mean, like I realized with the cancer um, that I had to deal with my anger. I had to really start facing my feelings in such a deep way because it was going to kill me from the inside or at least rob me of the gifts of health and, you know, um, and it's been an ongoing process. It's a long-term process. Like Mars is a two and a half year cycle in terms of its um, cycle. And Venus is an 18 month cycle. So these are, you know, but the nodes are an 18 year cycle. Pluto is a 248 year cycle. So on the scope of things, we have both simultaneously shorter term cycles that are really culminating in this week and we have longer term cycles that are coming to their very end in this time and so it's important to take note to take stock of um you know where we are how we are how we are feeling most importantly what those feelings are revealing to us, right? Because in terms of the level of consciousness, if we can access, actually, I think if we can access the child level of consciousness, if we can access the very upset toddler who is so mad about what is, what wherever this is happening in your chart, wherever this is activating feelings in your life, right? If we could access that, then we also can simultaneously access the inner adult, the one who is compassionate, the divine father, the the divine spirit of compassion, right? I, I, I often, for me, I turn to Jesus and his, you know, his unfailing love and compassion. And it's such a powerful thing to know that, I, you know, we can walk with someone, we can walk with this. And, and if this becomes our inner teacher, if this becomes the inner guide, then, then, you know, that is, helping us to process those emotional states, to resolve those patterns, to bring to close that feeling of separation and to recognize our safety and our deservingness, right? Of love and care and nourishment, protection, then if that's the way that we walk with ourselves, um, we can heal and move beyond so much in this time, especially even with the intensity of a full moon. 
And I just want to talk a little bit about the the full moon energy. You know, the full moon is the opposition. Jeffrey Wolf Green calls it the bridge to evolution. And in order to cross the bridge, we have to move from the personal into the social, the universal, the collective, right? We have to we have to go from being identified with the pain, the resentment, the hurt in our lives to recognizing the ways that we're being called to mature into a path of healing, into a path of forgiveness, into a path of devotion towards our lives that is bringing us forward into a healed and whole perspective, into a holy perspective of our lives that allows us to say, oh yeah, I went through that. It was hard. Those, you know, it hurt. I was sad. I was disappointed. And here I am grown from that, developed from that. My character, my um, capacities have all come out of this. My capacity for unconditional love has only grown out of the experiences that one might believe to not deserve our unconditional love, you know? And I had to make the decision in myself. You know, so many people get divorced and it's like very easy to go from love to hatred so quickly. And when that was happening, when I was getting divorced, I had to make the decision to love and to do whatever it took inside myself. And sometimes that can be hard if you're up against a relationship where there is deep hurt and challenging and or betrayal or you know all it can be so hard to find that resolve within but it you know making that decision gave me everything that i have today in a way and so i'm grateful for that you know, but it would, was it what I wanted to do? Was it how I would have wanted my life to be going? Absolutely not. Was it what I thought was going to happen or how I was going to live? Is it perfect now? No. Do feelings still come up? Yes. Do things come up where I still feel hurt or betrayed or abandoned? Yes. Does it still reflect in my perception of things now that I have to work on? Absolutely. Where I have to be able to identify as that adult self. Oh, that's what's happening in that feeling. I can see that. Wow, that's hard. And, you know, with perception, it's not always reality, right? Neptune, Pisces, um, while it can reflect unconditional love, it also can reflect illusion and delusion. It can reflect our... Um, patterns relative to numbing out with alcohol, any way in which we can escape our feelings, which are truly at the bottom line, the, the grief of not feeling our connection to source, to, to love, right? Any way, and then that can become an illusion. That can become a delusion. That can become a way in which we're lost, right? And so I really do think with this full moon that we, with this eclipse in particular, um, that we are finding our way to resolution through such strong oppositional energy, right? And we're finding our way to crossing that evolutionary bridge, which I think is really interesting because in many ways, we have helpers, right? So um, we're, there's a formation here of a mystic rectangle. And that is Neptune and Pisces with the moon to Uranus and Taurus here, um, which is that energy of breakthrough and liberation, right? And then we have the other leg of the rectangle here there's also kind of a kite pattern happening here with um, Pluto and Capricorn and Uranus 
with that these two sextiles that are um, coming from Neptune and the moon. And then on the other end of this, we've got the, the sun in Virgo, right? Discernment or discrimination and sextile to Pallas Athene and Lilith in Sagittarius. And these energies in particular, Uranus and Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, and Lilith and Pallas Athene have to do with the liberation of the feminine, uh, the wild feminine, the unconditioned feminine, the embodied feminine. You know, I just taught a whole class series um, called The Goddess Within, which you can you can get access to if you're interested. And it, I taught on Lilith, asteroid Lilith, then my current goddess within class series and Pallas Athene in the last series. And it's really, you know, it's like, this is the wisdom. This is the capacity and the discernment to know that those fearful places, those conditioned parts of ourselves, those old emotional residues are not who we are. They are the past for sure. And they have definitely colored our perception, but they do not define the truth of who we are. And to really reclaim those parts, we have to heal them. And in order to heal them, we have to feel them. And that's kind of the conundrum. It's kind of like there's no way out but through. And going back to the birth metaphor, right? And I was talking about how cancer relates to the process, the evolutionary process of development, you know, emotional development. But here in the development of a baby, right, it takes a very long time. The first trimester takes forever, so, you know, it's weeks and weeks and weeks of very small incremental development. And then eventually you cross a threshold where the development becomes much more about building the, the bones and the brains and the parts and the heart and everything is really there at one at some point, you know, by 36, 38 weeks, everything's there. And, you know, wherever we're at in our development in terms of our incremental capacities towards feeling what, you know, what has been necessary to heal. And then maybe we're more developed. Maybe we have tools. Maybe we have resources. We have people in our lives. We have support. We have more emotional awareness, more self-awareness. We have more of that um relationship with the divine father with the divine um the spirit of forgiveness you know with our teacher from within um whoever that is for you you know for me it's jesus yeshua um you know it's the holy spirit it's god um and those i and i lean on that every single day because that's where i can find that renewal and that resource. And then I have tools like in my daily life where I have processes to discharge my emotions and I have people that I can speak to and I have things that I can do. And even still, maybe I'm not, I'm not saying at all that I'm fully developed, right? But at some point when the baby decides to come, there is this vast wide opening that has to happen like you go from one centimeter of dilation to 10 centimeters. It's it's quite huge that, you know, and that portal opens and then there's a whole process of pushing that happens. And actually, if left alone, the fetal ejection reflex actually can push the baby out, right? There's a impulse inside the body to get it out, Right. And within our own emotional body, we can really feel that capacity. Like the emotions do not want to stay. This is why toddlers are so great mirrors for this because they don't let their emotion, like they don't want to let their emotions stay. They, they express them They're It's coming out where it doesn't matter to them where they are, 
what they're doing. I mean, as a parent, it can be a little embarrassing, like, you know, okay, how do I deal with this? You know, what, uh, learning how to navigate properly, really being able to support their emotional process, no matter where you are, right? Doesn't matter what's happening. But the point that I'm making is this portal opens and then there is an intensity that happens and then it's done. And what do you get on the other side? Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Pure light of God, miracle in your arms, unconditional love. Everyone I ever see post a thing about baby is born and we're just like in so much love. Now, chemically, that oxytocin is happening in the brain and all the adrenaline that it took to get the baby out is done and you're feeling the hormone of love, really. But I think what happens is that portal opens and the soul comes through and the soul is a pure source. Our soul, your soul, my soul, every soul born is a pure source of unconditional love that comes in. And in the face of that, there's nothing that we can do other than Feel that unconditional love. Um, maybe in many circumstances we can avoid or deny or be disassociated from that. But for the most part, this is why birth is such a miraculous experience for people. Then it's done. The pain is done. The intensity is done. The pushing is done. It is over. And there is a resolution. And I think relative to what's happening with Mars, we're in that um, intense transition that will lead to the other side to having the miracle of unconditional love in our uh, in our lives. And I really do pray that that happens for each and every one of you, that whatever arises for you as you're navigating this week, you know, whatever feelings arise, whatever crises, whatever changes that need to be made, whatever, whatever challenges that are faced, you know, because we end this week after that full moon with a moon Uranus, uh, sun in Virgo on the south node, trining Pluto, this is a powerful trine, these three aspects. Uranus, Moon, um, Virgo, Sun, Pluto, and Capricorn. A restructuring. Uh, on an earthly plane level, right? I mean, you could say this could be even like earthquake or, you know, physical, ah, right? But it's a definite restructuring and Pluto's in Capricorn culminating a final cycle right so it's it's leaving us at the end with the end right it's leaving us with what we're here now that that's cleared now that that's cleared what can we what can we build and where are we going from here and what do we have right it's like what I was talking about earlier when I made the dis decision to really focus on um, getting to unconditional love through the most difficult circumstance in my life that I had been through at that time. Um, then it gave me everything that I ever wanted, everything that I had been asking for, everything that I had been praying for uh, was on the other side of that process. And similarly, the the... I called this year 2024 the year of rebirth. That's all of the month aheads have been, you know, my whole process in deciding what to teach for this year has been based on this. Because this is literally what's happening, you know, and the caterpillar has to completely surrender, say goodbye absolutely to its previous form dissolve into total nothingness, risk its life in a process which, if disturbed, would end, end the transformation only to emerge miraculously 
as something completely different. And for most of us, this process of transformation is underway and maybe has pretty much taken place in some way, shape or form already in many, you know, in many respects, but is the emergent part is still coming forth, right? There are still aspects of self that are unknown to us now that are still being birthed. There are still answers to questions that our soul has that are still coming. And right after this eclipse, we have the sun ingressing into the sign of Libra, which is the fall equinox, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. It would be the spring equinox in the Southern Hemisphere. And we have Venus moving into the sign of Scorpio. Um, so for those of you who would be interested, I will do a later video this week on uh, the ingress of the equinox. Um, it's not too late to join Love Evolution. My course will be touching in on our next class on Venus and Scorpio. And we'll be practicing with the Venus and Libra, which the teachings are available for right now in that class series. So you can still join me if that's something that you're interested in. And, you know, take good care of yourself this week. Get extra rest if you can. Drink lots of water. Swim in bodies of water. You know, go Michael Phelps out your emotions. <laughs> you know, get your... Get your good cry, your good healthy cry on. Um, let your two-year-old scream and shout and, you know, just love them up. Just stand there and love them up, like, with all that yeah, patience and compassion for self that you can muster in whatever whatever arises this week. And... I will see you again soon, my friends. Bye for now. And one last thing, just if you are new to this channel, please subscribe. I, I um, love hearing your comments. So if there's something that touched your heart, please leave me a message in the comments. Let me know what touched you and or even just leave me a little heart or some smiles um emoji style and you know my my prayer is that these these week ahead episodes are a blessing to you and to your life so i hope that you enjoyed this thanks so much for watching and bye for now